Okay, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over an example uh, for big O notation in the CTCI book. And this time, this is a little tricky. It's a nested for loop. However, the inner for loop says int j equals i plus one. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the problem, I want to go over two other examples really quick that I've done in other videos. So the first one here is we have two for loops, but they occur one after the other. So we have you know a couple of constant operations we don't care about. Um, then we have this for loop that goes from zero to the length of the array, whatever that is. Okay, and we just have a constant operation inside that adds. So this is big O of n because we go from zero to whatever the length of the array is, which we're going to call n. Okay, so then after this for loop is finished, then then we have another one, and this is the same thing except we just have uh, multiplication on the inside of the for loop. So this is also big O of n. Now, what we do here is we just add these. We don't multiply them. We add them because they occur one after the other. So we have n plus n, which is equal to 2n. However, we don't care about the 2, so we drop it, and we just have big O of n. All right. Now, moving on to the next example, we have a nested loop. So both of these loops go from zero to the length of the array. So the outer one is big O of n, and the inner is also big O of n. And we just have constant operation for printing. That doesn't matter. So what we have here is n times n, because the inner loop goes from zero to the length of the array, n, and we do that n times. So we do n times n, which is equal to big O of n squared. Okay, and this leads us into our actual example. And the difference here between this and the previous one is they both look like nested for loops, which they are. However, on the inner for loop, it says j equals i plus one. Now, it's pretty obvious it, when an intervie interviewer asks you something like this and you see this, there's some sort of potential trick here um, or they are really just trying to find out your thought process on how you would solve this problem. Now, it does seem like you know the answer is just big O of n squared, which what I would come to uh, in my head if I was asked this in an interview. However, I know that they also want to see how I would come up with that solution. So what I would do in this situation is, well, we know it takes an array. How about we just uh, create a simple array with four elements and then just go through these loops and see what happens. See if there's some pattern. A lot of times there's a pattern to something and that's going to help you figure out what they're trying to get from you. Okay, so let's just do this. So array is equal to, let's just give it one, two, three, and four. And this means that the length of the array or n is equal to four. For n i equals zero, so we start out zero. Then we go to the inner for loop, j is equal to i plus one or j is equal to zero plus one. So initially i is zero, j is one. And then we just simply print i comma the print j. So i is zero, j is one. All right, now we increment j on the inner loop. j goes from one to two, two is less than four. So now we print out zero, two, because i is still zero. We increment j again, j is three, three is still less than four. So now we print out zero, three. Well, three, we increment j again, j goes from three to four, four is not less than four, so we're done here. We, we go from the inner, inner loop back to the outer loop. We increment i, so now i is 1. Now, on the inner loop, j is equal to i plus 1 or 1 plus 1, so j is equal to 2 on the first time through. So i is 1, j is 2. Well, we increment j. j goes from 2 to 3. 3 is still less than 4, so now we have 1, 3. We increment j again. It goes from 3 to 4. Well, now j is 4. 4 is not less than 4. So we're done with the inner loop. Go back to the outer loop. We increment i, which it goes from 1 to 2. And then on the inner loop, j is equal to i plus 1, or j is equal to 2 plus 1. So now on the first time through the inner loop in this iteration, we have 2, 3. Okay, because j is equal to 3, 2 plus 1. 
and we increment j, j goes from 3 to 4. However, 4 is still not less than 4, so we're done with the inner loop. Go back out to the outer loop. i is now equal to 3, because we incremented 1. We go to the inner, inner loop. j is equal to i plus 1, or 3 plus 1, which is 4. Well, 4 is not less than 4, so we don't print anything out um, this iteration. And then we go back out to the outer loop. Uh, I goes from 3 to 4. Well, 4 is not less than 4, so this means we are done. Okay, so now we're finished analyzing the array. So we printed out 6 here unordered pairs, but we missed some. We didn't print out all of them, right? Like here, we could have printed out 1, 1. We couldn't print out 2, 1, 2, 2. And on that last iteration, or I is equal to 3, J was equal to 3 plus 1 which is four. So we didn't print out anything here. So we missed out on three, uh, three unordered pairs here. So what it looks like to me is we have six that we printed, six that we didn't. So it looks like we just print out about half of them. Okay, well, we have uh, two, two loops, we could, you know, big O of n, big O of n, or you could kind of say like, uh, some grid here where we only print out half of them. Initially, I could just say, oh, well, this is big O of n. The inner loop is big O of n. So you could just say we have n times n, but we only print about half of them. So this is equal to n squared divided by 2. Uh, the exponent takes precedence here. So we get rid of the division and just say big O of n squared. Now, the inner for loop isn't exactly big O of n, and you could say that, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you just still say it's big O of n, right? We went through an example, and you could say, well, this still is big O of n squared, but we're only printing out about half of them. Okay, so that's one way to do this. However, another way, the more math-oriented way to think about this, is the outer loop runs n times. So big O of n. However, the inner loop actually runs n minus 1 times. Okay, so the reason is if n equals 4, like we have here, the outer loop runs 4 times uh, the first time through, but the inner loop only runs 3 times because it starts out at i plus 1. All right, so this would mean this is equal to the equation would be n times n minus 1. Okay. However, if we know that n is equal to 4, there are 6 pairs. So if we just plug in 4 here, we know that this is 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. That's incorrect, because we have to divide by 2. So the re full equation would be n times n minus 1 divided by 2. And then divided by 2 would be 6. Okay, so let's take this up here n times n minus 1 is just n squared minus n over 2. Again, the exponent always takes precedence. So you get rid of the minus n, get rid of the 2, and you're again just left with n squared. Okay, so I hope that made sense. In any situation where you're not exactly sure what to think, because again, in a real situation, you're going to be nervous. You might not be able to think uh, clearly. So either there's a brute force way on a lot of problems. You can start out that way just to help get your mind going, and or just come up with an example for a parameter and then just run through the method and see what it prints out, okay, or whatever the result is. And then be like, kind of analyze it. And here you could see that, well, we only printed out half of them. So we have a nested for loop divided by two. It still comes out to be n squared, but we went through the process and now the interviewer knows uh, what we were thinking to come up with the solution. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, put them into the comments below, or if you have anything else that you would like to, or have you'd like to have me go over to help you understand it a little bit better, or at least have a different perspective. Okay, um, put it in the comments below, and I'll read it and I'll try to help you out. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.